Thank you. I want to bring in David Clooney now. David is the executive director of the Black Economic Alliance. Uh, David, good to have you, sir. So I, the bill hasn't passed yet, but given the political landscape in Texas, it's inevitable that it is going to pass in, in some form. Um, if and when that does happen, what's, what's the next step to make sure that people are registered and informed on how to vote, specifically voters of color? So, Craig, thank you for having me on. This bill is really part of a larger national phenomenon of um, over 360 bills being introduced in 47 states just since Election Day, all under the auspices of voter security and voter integrity, um, which are essentially a solution in search of a problem. What the Black Economic Alliance was formed to do was uh, hold our leaders, both in the public and private sector, accountable to look out for the interest of, uh, of black people and, and all of us. So really, this is about a, uh, an all out assault on democracy and uh, engagement and access to vote. So what we're trying to do right now is educate the business community. And, and we've been calling the business community to speak on this because um, when the business community speaks, they have a different platform to speak from and uh, lawmakers at the state and local level and at the federal level, level alike listen. Um, but also because the business community has uh, ostensibly made a commitment to look out for all of their stakeholders, particularly their employees and the communities they serve. Uh, and in the past year, we've heard a lot of um, messaging paid to and, and even financial commitments paid to racial equity. And, and this is absolutely a case where we need the business community to call out um, what is, in fact, a, an attack on um, the most well uh, participated in and um, highest number of voter engagement we've ever had, and particularly the, I think, largest impact of black voters we've ever seen. So this is essentially, um, Texas is just one of the many states where these laws are passing. We saw a law pass in um, uh, Florida earlier in the week. Obviously, Georgia has gotten a lot of attention, but this will be an ongoing discussion about um, who we are as a country and uh, if we want people to engage in the process of voting, and, and if so, if everybody has that access or just some people. I mean, more than 180 local businesses, 50 corporations who have come out against this bill in Texas uh, and others like it. You yourself, you tweeted that, quote, voter suppression is bad for business. And for folks who haven't been following this story as, as closely, David, how will these changes that are being proposed in Texas, how will they affect businesses? So I think it's important to see that uh, there are efforts that have been taken up by the business community. There was a letter that was put out earlier this week by Fair Elections Texas um, with a number of businesses signing on saying that this was bad for business, um, and as well as the Greater Houston Partnership just came out and reissued a stronger statement than it had previously, uh, which I, I think really um, failed to meet the moment, their original statement. And essentially all of these calls uh, from the business community are saying we want an environment in, in our state and, and in the country writ large, but particularly in states where they uh, decide to make investments, move employees um, and, and set up shop and, and you know, try to invest in communities. They want an environment that is inclusive and welcoming of everybody. So in places where that is not the case and in places like Texas and Georgia and Florida and so many other states where these bills are moving around, um, where the state legislature and the state lawmakers are, and even at the local level, are showing an ability to uh, restrict and discriminate uh, against certain voters and, and certain constituents, restrict their ability to vote. Yeah. Um, that is going to be bad for business because companies who are there may not want to stay there and companies who are considering going there uh, will look elsewhere. And I think we saw examples of this a few years ago uh, with bathroom bills and uh, protections for the LGBTQ community that, uh, Companies showed a lot of courage on, uh, like the NCAA and PayPal and others who moved out of North Carolina, for example, when they passed a law that was discriminatory against the LGBTQ community. And David, and we're do, asking for this. Do, do you think that there is a chance uh, in Texas and Georgia and Florida as well, where we've seen similar uh, laws like this passed recently, that they could end up having um, the unintended effect? And by that, I mean, uh, next election cycle, you'll have folks who perhaps have not typically been engaged in the process, uh, all of a sudden, because they feel as if their rights are being restricted, they go out in droves. Do you, do you think that's a possibility? Yes, it is. But let me answer the question two ways. One, let's be very clear about what the intent of these laws is. The intent of these laws is to stop what happened in 2020, which is the largest voter turnout we've ever had and the largest impact of black voters we've ever had, to stop that from happening again. 
Um, so we need to make sure that that intent is not carried out. But your question is, could these have the, the unintended effect of uh, mobilizing and galvanizing people to vote because they are motivated by people wanting to take away their right and take away their access? And, and that is absolutely possible. Um, I think we saw some of that in 2020, where people understood that there were efforts being undertaken uh, to keep particularly black people away from the polls. So that's why you had people showing up, um, sitting in line, you know, waiting for 12 hours in some cases, bringing you know, packed lunches with them. And I, and I think you could expect a, a similar amount of engagement. The problem is what we don't want is people not having the proper access to vote um, by way of early voting, by way of automatic registration, um, and, and there are so many different ways, yeah. voter ID laws. Uh, we're very concerned about the way that these laws are really kind of surgically, um, with surgical precision, they look at how to keep particular people, particularly black people uh, and older folks and uh, immigrants and certain, uh, certain communities, marginalized communities away from the polls. So even though these laws could have the unintended impact of uh, motivating people to vote, we're, we're concerned about people's actual access to the polls. So uh, we need yeah. to make sure that these laws don't pass uh, and that uh, even if we are able to galvanize and mobilize folks to get to the polls, which we, Black Economic Alliance and other groups will continue to do, people need to have the legal right and access to cast their ballot. David Clooney will have to leave it there. Thank you, David. Thanks for your time. Enjoy your weekend, sir.